good evening. Uh, this is Mark, the incognito astronomer. Um, coming you to you tonight from my chilly backyard um, in the Midwest, Ohio to be exact, um, on one of the first semi-clear nights uh, we've had in quite a while. Um, I'm going to start off by apologizing that I haven't had more content up recently, but um, since uh, the end of December, um, I think we've had two clear nights, um, maybe three, uh, and I just have not had an opportunity to get out. Um, however, tonight uh, is an opportunity um, to get out and uh, take an observation, even though there are some high uh, haze uh, in the sky tonight. Um, it's not completely clear by any stretch, and there is a moon. But um, if you could see up here in my target name, I have the comet C2022E3ZTF. Uh, the ZTF stands for, I believe, the gentleman or observatory that found the comet. Um, this is that green comet that's in the news. Um, you can kind of see it here. Um, these are five second exposures in real time uh, with about 400 gain on my Uranus C camera. The telescope I'm using tonight is my SV Boney uh, 70ED. Uh, so it's a 70 millimeter scope, so it's rather small. Um, but I thought I would uh, try to use that tonight uh, to frame the target the best. I wasn't sure how big the comet would be um, and did not want to use my larger telescope for uh, fear that I'd be too close in and it wouldn't be able to frame right. But um, what we're going to do here tonight is we're going to put this thing in a live stack uh, for you right now. We're going to see what it's going to look like. So I'm in SharpCap. I do have the uh, pro version, so I paid uh, the annual fee. Uh, I'm going to hit the live stack button here and we're going to see what's going on. So live stacking, here we are. We're going to clear. I did have an attempt earlier that did not go well. And we're going to clear that. Clear, clear, clear. The computer is acting funny today, but that's okay. We're going to start a new stack. And we should be getting some frames here. All right, there we go. So got a new stack I'm gonna reset everything uh, one of the other features I like about the SharpCat Pro is the click a button to auto color balance and then you can move these histogram sliders around to pull details Oh, look there's a satellite trail there in the image that's okay though it'll uh, kind of fade out over time all right so we're at 30 seconds worth of stack uh, one of the things to keep in mind this comet is moving extremely fast so if you're trying to take timed exposures of this, it's going to, um, unless you can track the comet, if you're tracking the stars, it's going to start to blur the comet relatively quickly. So I'm going to zoom in on the comet's nucleus here, which is the, uh, the actual ball of uh, ice that's producing this big haze around it, or coma. So I'm going to pull out so you can kind of see it's a dot right now. We're at one minute. We're going to come back to that in a couple minutes and see what it looks like. So this, again, is in real time as I'm showing this to you. We're going to go back to, uh, go back to, um, I say, 20%. Uh, I'm going to fiddle with these and take some pictures as we're going. Um, every once in a while, you'll get a satellite trail. It's uh, it's one of those things that in when you're doing astronomy, it, it just happens. You uh, There's satellites everywhere. So... All right, um, it does have a nice greenish tint to it, if you can kind of tell in here. Um, I'm not sure what this reddish color is. I think it might just be some of the cloud haze, or I might not have um, uh, my darks and flats correct. Um, I tried taking them earlier, but, you know, again, I could have easily have messed up. So, All right, so here we are. Uh, we're at 111 seconds. I'm going to hit the uh, button save exactly as seen. Now I know you can't see the drop down menus because of uh, how I'm recording this, but in SharpCap, the save uh, button, if you click this down arrow, there's four different save uh, types you can do. You can save it as 16 bit, uh, raw file, uh, save with adjustments, and then save exactly as seen. I like to hit save exactly as seen because it saves a picture of, the, of what's exactly here on the screen. Um, and I like to just fiddle with my histogram as I see it. Um, it kind of keeps the AA or electronically assisted astronomy pure. I don't do a lot of um, 
adjustments after the fact to my pictures. I might crop them occasionally, tighten it up. Um, Cause like this, I probably will crop somewhere in here um, just to, you know, try to frame it better or get rid of some the satellite trails. I just cut it off right here. Um, but we're at uh, three minutes now. Uh, I'm going to go back in, pull out some details if we can. There's not a whole lot there. I see online lots of really cool pictures with the different uh, lobes of this. And I am not seeing it, but hey, it's a comet that's not going to be around for 50,000 years. So um, I'm glad I got pictures of it. It's one of the wonderful things about um, electronically assisted astronomy is I can take my camera out, get some pictures, and lo and behold, here they are. You know, here's some stuff that now going to I'm now going to have available for ever that I can go back and look at some other time. All right, we're going to take a look at this nucleus again. I'm going to scroll over. If you notice, look how it's an oval shape now. In fact, I'll pull this out a little bit more, see if it darkens it up. You can easily see how it's a line. In the last four minutes, that comet has moved in compared to the background stars. It's moved that far. Now that may not seem like a whole lot, uh, but it is really cooking. Um, right now the comet is about 42 million miles away from Earth. Uh, today is February 1st, 2023. So the comet, uh, I think it comes at its closest to Earth tomorrow. Um, so it's really moving quickly relative to the background stars. Um, and this right here is the entire reason that long exposures, if you can't uh, guide on the comet itself and track the comet. But if you track the comet, the stars will start to streak just as much as this comet nucleus is right now. That's moving that fast. So uh, cometary uh, photography is really challenging. So that's some next level stuff. Honestly, I'm just happy I got some pictures. I'm happy I can share them with you. Um, the video has been going for about seven minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, just by saying, you know, I appreciate everybody who's observed, who's, uh, watched my videos, uh, especially all of my subscribers. Um, I'm up over 200 of oh, no, 150. I wish I was 200. Um, I'm up over 150, which is pretty awesome considering the, uh, the niche that I'm in. Um, I appreciate every one of you. If you like what you see, um, feel free to subscribe. Um, I appreciate it. I try to get content out as I can and hopefully as spring's coming along here soon, I'll be able to get out more often and uh, have more things to share with you as I go through my journey of uh, observing the night sky. Um, so again, I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you like what you see or if you have questions, you can always comment. Um, so thanks again and have a wonderful night and hope you all have clear skies and a wonderful day. Bye-bye.